Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be showing you two popular brands of speed loaders or speed clips, depending on what you want to call them. And uh, advantages and disadvantages. Doesn't seem like a whole lot of people out there seem to know that there's better stuff and there's some terrible stuff. It's up to you to decide what you want to use. All right, so what we have here is two brands, very popular brands. We have our Safari Land. And Safari Land features an activation plunger in the middle. So when the clip is inserted into the gun, it hits this plunger and it'll release the ammunition. We have the I don't know what's going on with the camera. The HKS brand. This is a popular brand. It's been around a long time. It's probably the most popular one that the stores will carry because uh, it works. And it features a knob release. So when you put this into your cylinder, you give this a twist and then you have to lift it a little bit and rotate it and uh, Hopefully all of the bullets fall into the cylinder. So we have our revolver. And it looks like it's unloaded. It is. So now we'll proceed to load it with the uh, HKS. There we go. All right, so we'll try to get this to Get in there. Sometimes it helps to rotate it this way as you rotate the cylinder down until you develop enough skill to get the uh, rounds in there. You give it a twist, lift up a little bit, make sure it's down. You rotate it and it supposedly rolls off like that. So there we go, put that over there. And we have our Safari Land. There we go. And this one, uh, you can tell we have that plunger for support. You don't have a lot of chatter here, which makes it easier to get in there. And so when we push on the body, you can see some releasing there. But if you twist it like this, you might come up short on your round count. That was a gross exaggeration, but it is a possibility. It could also help, prop up, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> It could probably also happen with the HKS brand. The HKS has little teeth that come out when you rotate the knob. Come on, camera. There we go. That holds the shells in. So you can load it faster if you wish. There, give her a twist, and we got all our bullets in there. What we have here is the uh, very loose fit that I'd like to recall. I would like to refer to as the PP dance. <laughs> it's supposed to be a speed uh, loader. And here it is doing the PP James. Like I got some urgency. I need to get in there, get out of there, kind of thing, you know. Um, and <laughs> so we have the Safari Land um, that uses a different release mechanism. Seems like there's a cam in there. So when this guy gets pushed, it rotates and releases the ammo. You can see the 
Come on, camera. Oh. There we go. The little gear teeth that hold the uh, the shells in place, and then when this is inserted and it hits the uh, center pin area of the extractor star, it starts the release of the shells that come straight down. And what's nice about this is the holes aren't round. They're slightly teardrop shaped. So when your rounds are traveling, you know, the uh, center of the rim wouldn't be dragging on the bore that holds it when it releases. And also the rounds, when this thing is new, has a tendency to lock them in like this. Not straight, but at a slight angle. So they don't, they don't rattle them around. Okay, so let's load this guy. This uh, was the industry standard for cops transition to the uh, pistols. A lot of the highway patrol guys had the Safari Land speed clip. So when you get used to this, you, you can be able to push this in your hand, push down, and twist your... Okay. When you get used to it... Uh, I'm not used to it. All right, so I'll have to do it a different way. Oops. It's not the easiest to load. I'll give you that. But I'm gonna put this face down, push down on the body, push down on the center dial, and give it a twist till it clicks. So I'm holding the body, so all the rounds are up in the inside of this cylinder. I'm pushing down and twisting, kind of like a knob but it activates the cam inside this speed clip and the bullets oh well, on this one they're spread out a little bit more they're not kind of like aimed in a little bit but um they're against the uh, activation plunger as you can see maybe you can see there's a slight taper to them all right so Got our, edge, our HKS. Come on, baby. there we go, brother. They're in, but when you're trying to twist it, you know, the, uh, the rounds do tend to get held up in the bore of the speed clips. And then you have your Safari Land. Come on, brother, come on. There you go. And this guy goes in easy. All you're going to do is push the body. I think that went a lot easier than Safari Land. But um, you can make up your mind which one you want to use. But uh, I wouldn't call HKS a speed loader or speed clip because it takes a lot of work to get that. Uh, all those rounds aligned in the cylinder to be able to push it down and give it a twist. But um, one of the major issues with speed clips, oops, come on, and moon clips, there you go. Push it all down there, push down on the body, down, twist. There they are. Nice and snug. Not doing the PP dance. I'll show you what I'm getting at in a second here. There we go. Ooh, I'm so scared. Oh. I'm afraid to shoot. Ah. Yeah, I don't care much for 
HKS, but um, on your cylinder, you tend to have a sharp edge because a lot of people that make revolvers don't know what they're doing these days because revolvers aren't really as popular as pistols. And that makes a drastic impact on how well your uh, bullets feed in. You know, if you have, uh, oh, say wad cutters where it looks like a Dixie cup type bullet and you go to put it in, you might have more difficulty being that sharp edge is there. But if you have round um, projectiles right on the nose, you know, where it's rounded, they go in a lot easier. Preferably when you use speed loaders, you want your ammunition to be round and not hollow point type bullets that are square because that's going to affect your alignment and the speed of alignment getting these guys in and just to show you what I'm talking about when I'm criticizing gun, you know, guns and manufacturers that may not know what they're doing. Uh, this is a Colt. It's an official police. It's been rebuilt by someone who knew what they were doing. The trigger is tapered down with a convulsive grip technique that you're supposed to use with revolvers. The rear sight was re re <laughs> welded and recut. Being the barrel goes to the right. And there's not a person alive today that was around when this gun came out new. This probably came out just before the end of the First World War or maybe a little after the first world war the world war world war 1 and um what we have here is it's beveled all the way around the cylinder mouth which makes it easier to load and use speed clips much much easier so if you got like the HKS brand and you go to put it in it's a lot easier. Spin that guy around. You know, just so we don't have the same thing going on at the same time. So you know that I'm kind of trying here to make it work. But it's a little easier because the bullets aren't cutting into that sharp corner. And with the the Santa the Sannies, uh <laughs> Safari Land. Sanus makes a lot of other stuff, you know, um, really great belts. But uh, it's a lot easier to get your stuff in there when there's a bevel. They don't do that anymore because there's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing when they're building revolvers. And some of these are custom revolvers that cost an awful lot of money. And um, so what we have here is a rebuilt Colt official police with a legendary Packmeyer grip that specializes in the use of the convulsive grip technique. And it's been zeroed in. Um, by the guy who rebuilt it, I don't know at what yardage, you know, that this thing hits center, but it's pretty accurate. I shot it a few times, and as old as it is, um, I can't really part with it. <laughs> it's one of the most accurate guns I own. You might think that your Colt Python is the most accurate gun, and it really isn't. These official police, these barrels are the same um, type of bore that you would get in any of the snake gun series only they're much lighter they call that a pencil barrel because it kind of looks a little bit like a pencil nothing fancy they didn't really guard the uh, ejector the ejection rods on these things and uh, they kept them close to the barrel so when you hosted these things they wouldn't snag drag and break but over the years uh, they had problems with that 
And then they started to put these little guys on the barrel. And all this does here is it protects the ejection rod. Some people think that the cylinder locks up there, and it doesn't. It really doesn't. That's that's a myth. That just protects the ejection rod. Uh, the way the guns lock up on a revolver is this is your recoil bearing lug. So when a round is fired, the bullet goes forward, the shell is, becomes integral to the uh, cylinder, and the cylinder starts to go back, you know, this way. And um, so there's a little bit of flex, and it'll slam into the frame down here on a lot of alloy guns. And um, you notice that most with the uh, Magnum type calibers. But uh, yeah, this has no nothing to do with uh, locking the cylinder whatsoever. So when you go to buy a revolver, they'll say, oh, it's got a three-point locking system. It might have a detent ball here that locks it. And it'll have the uh, center pin that locks it into the frame. And all it is is just a sliding detent. It's a rod instead of a ball. But the way a revolver works, it works like a pinwheel. Um, so the only thing that keeps this guy inside the frame is this center pin. And then this is the uh, recoil bearing surface. And they try to make this yoke or a uh, crane. If it's a Colt, uh, it was called a crane. If it was like a Taurus, they'd call it a yoke. The, the terms, um, they're, they're not really that important. It's just what they called it at the time. People have their own names, you know, for their their parts. But um, Smith & Wesson was kind of a product that was less expensive than the Colts. The Colts were, were all put together by an artisan in a factory. Every Colt was built and timed by hand. Um, they'd have the, you know, the, the base part, you know, and they would have to be artistically fitted and, and checked by an employee. And so it got to be really expensive. They usually came with rosewood grips. Uh, Smith & Wesson came with cheaper grips. I think they were oak. The oak ones don't hold up too well, but um, you know, they needed a lot of guns really quick and Smith and Wesson could put them out faster than Colt. And uh, it, became, it became a love affair in law enforcement to have a Smith and Wesson K-frame. But the best revolvers that I've ever dealt with in my, my life have been the the I and the E frame. This is an E frame Colt revolver. You know, um, the way that your hand interacts with it is ergonomically correct. It used to be, I think, it might have been the old Colt Army before they became the official police. So that frame has been around a very, very long time. Whereas the K frame, um, not so much. But there's a lot of difference between the two. But that's not the basis of this video. This video is to show you the difference between brands and the various personalities between this and that. And what it means to you when you decide that you want to buy a speed clip or speed loader. I would go with the Safari Land personally. I just like it a little better, keeps things snug and tight, and when uh, things get really scary, you know, it, it's, it performs a lot better, in my opinion, than some chattery pee-pee dance uh, HKS. <laughs> but um, I could actually see this thing causing a problem. 
I'm sure there's quite a few guys that could load a revolver by hand individually loading the rounds in versus trying to wiggle this guy in there and you know and twist the knob and flick it out of the way and then close the cylinder I mean one of those those uh, rounds get hung up in there you're gonna ruin your your round count so um, you know, so anyway, guys, uh, if you liked this video, like and subscribe. But I think that's all there is to discuss with uh, speed clips. I don't have a moon clip to show you, uh, which is a stamped piece of metal where the rounds are snapped in and it becomes a solid unit with, uh, you know, the, the bullets. And then you put it in like a unit. And then when you shoot them, you eject it like a unit and you put another one in um, that would have the rounds loaded in. So... The way that I loaded these things, um, you wouldn't be able to do with a, you know, with a moon clip. You know, it's a lot harder to load those things when you're in a hurry, like I just loaded these two. But um, anyway, uh, if you like it, like and subscribe, and I'll put more content out there that's relevant and uh, will help you. I, I, I really believe it will help you a lot better than... What it took for me to figure this stuff out over the years. <laughs> Y'all have a good day. Bye.